Hi everyone, welcome to Hyperledger Healthcare Special Interest Group monthly meeting. So here we welcome everyone. All are welcome to our Hyperledger community. So there is no bias in any way and you are open, uh, you are welcome to openly suggest, give your suggestions and participate. And what we do here is we are building a better together, like together we are building a better world. So it's a Hyperledger Foundation is an open source global ecosystem for the enterprise grade blockchain technologies. See, like when we have this enterprise grade blockchain technologies, we can have a blockchain wherever it can be uh, applicable for the day-to-day -day applications. So that is what we are aiming to build over here. And there are like, uh, we have the core developer community. You can get participated, uh, like connected with them through Discord. And as a member, what benefits you get? You are uh, involving yourself in the thought leadership and uh, marketing for if you are a company, like you get marketing of your company over here and you get a very supportive community here. See, for uh, whatever you are building new, if you want to build it as an open source one, the community is huge. The network is huge. That is what we get. So how you can get involved? You can uh, uh, like go to any one of these links like, and you can uh, check the Hyperledger wiki page like, and you, you can find out the regional chapters near to you. You can directly like uh, get involved in the meetups. Uh, weekly calls, monthly calls. So over here, like we are doing every month, third Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. IST. That is, uh, I suppose it is 3 p.m. Uh, for in GMT, I think. Give me a sec. I will check it out and uh, update you. Okay. Yeah, it is 3 p.m. GMT and 11 a.m. ET. That is the one we are doing. So like, um, we'll directly get into today's uh, agenda. Let me reshare my screen. Yeah. Um, so like, um, um, so, so like if anyone has joined new, please uh, feel free to introduce yourselves. And like we will have the, uh, <clears throat> antitrust policy. See like uh, it is given here, I, whether this antitrust policy is visible to you? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Please go through it. Actually, just before uh, starting the meeting, Elizabeth was reading it out and uh, giving the uh, detailed review of it also. Like, uh, please feel free to uh, click this link and read it out completely. And what you have, you can disclose because you are, whatever you speak, it is available in the open forum. So like what to be disclosed, what not to be disclosed, that it it is completely your choice. So please, uh, and uh, like have a proper uh, decorum for the forum. Like uh, these are what we need. And uh, is there any new joiners today? Okay. Uh, so if if you if you are a new joiner, just please uh, message in the. Uh, chat box, uh, your name, like if you have uh, Linux Foundation ID. So I have given this membership uh, directory over here. You can click that link and how to get your LFID. Uh, you can uh, go to that and create your Linux Foundation ID and start uh, like give contributing to the open source. And once you have the LFID only, you will be able to access this pages. So Arya, uh, and there is someone called administrator, whether you people want to introduce yourself.
Okay. Yes. So actually here, there is one, uh, uh, this uh, book, like call for chapters was there. And if anyone is writing, like make sure that you have to submit your full chapter by 30th of September. And uh, like today's event, like we have with us, Mr. Dr. Adarsh. He, uh, he is a senior scientist and convener for Kerala Blockchain Academy, um, which is a COE for blockchain and a digital university, Kerala. It's one of the very first digital universities in India. And uh, Kerala Blockchain Academy is the associate uh, training partner of, uh, along with, uh, sorry, for, uh, with uh, Hyperledger Foundation. And they do a fantastic job. Like even I have uh, taken a course from them and... Uh, they, they do a lot of courses, entrepreneurship, like blockchain courses. Even my interns, like uh, they uh, they got, they became certified blockchain developers from them. So like it is a, it's a big uh, work what they are doing. And today he will be presenting Immunochain uh, Vaccine Coverage Analysis and Supply Chain Solution Built-in Hyperledger. So without much delay, let me and the session over to him so the previous presentations the uh, like if you click the link you can uh, it will directly route you to the youtube channel like the particular talk you can get that and today's i will update so next month meeting will be on september 18th so i am still waiting for uh, uh, like presenter so if anyone else is interested if anyone uh, knows some uh, someone who can present you you can uh, suggest to us and in october dr sonali patel will be doing so please go through this uh, agenda also and i uh, will be uh, sharing it in the um, uh, meeting okay so let me stop sharing uh, dr adarsh please give your uh, introduction of yourself once again and you, uh, the forum is to you yeah, uh, <clears throat> thank, thank you, Dr. Anasri. I think you have uh, given a very generous introduction. So uh, myself, others, I'm currently working with uh, Kerala Blockchain Academy for the past six years, uh, primarily into blockchain uh, research as well as into a development tool. So as um, uh, Dr. Anasri rightly pointed out, we are uh, uh, the very first associate member and uh, official training partner of uh, Linux Foundation Hyperledger from India. We do offer multiple training programs uh, in uh, Hyperledger starting from Hyperledger software way back in 2018, then to Hyperledger Fabric. We have also teams working with uh, Hyperledger uh, Indie as well as the Ethereum client Besu and all. Uh, and we have a fairly good um, um, research division also in, in Hyperledger who are actually uh, working on multiple uh, consensus mechanisms, PBFTs and all. So without um, further delay, I will um, start with one of our solutions which we are uh, specifically focusing on the healthcare sector with uh, Hyperledger, which is called uh, Immunoshine. Um, yeah, can you can you uh, kindly give me the permission to? Uh, I share think the you screen? can. Think, yeah. It's not available. <clears throat> no, I'm I'm not the co-host, so I think. Okay, I'm okay, give me. Share this. Yeah, sure. Yes, yes. Done now. Okay. Um, No, I need to uh, view the thing. Maybe I, I'll just uh, rejoin in this link. I, I don't know uh, why it's not showing the screen sharing. I'll, I'll keep the rejoin. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, by the time uh, he rejoins, like uh, like the new join is over here. Could you introduce yourself? I think Anju, you have joined the meeting for the first time, right? Yeah, yeah, ma'am. Hi, and you welcome. I know you. You can introduce yeah. you to the forum, please. <laughs> Hi, myself, Panchu, working as senior technical content writer at Kerala Blockchain Academy. Yeah, I have been associated with KB for the past uh, three and a half years. Yeah. Yes, Adarsh has joined back. 
and i have made him uh, post also yeah i was uh... Uh, so, so can you can you let me know is it still in the um, lower bar the the screen share option because i'm just seeing the participant chat reactions and security options only in uh, the uh, lower part of the tab no actually there is no screen share as of now and over here like uh, everyone can share their screen that is the one oh, okay uh and so uh, uh, can can just let me know uh, in, in which part of the screen um, usually it, it happens in the lo lo bottom part right the okay share. okay so like uh, so is it still uh, the uh, there is an upward arrow right i suppose you are uh, if i join uh, uh, i'm actually i'm logging I'm logging from my um, browser okay yeah so usually it shows in the more uh, there there is this record breakout room settings okay. uh, no no not in the more uh like in the like there are few icons right in that one green upward arrow is there no no that that's yeah, not there that, that's what i was uh, common in uh, this issue is common when you uh, access from the browser if you access from the app oh. i think it should be okay uh oh is it okay you... so sorry so yeah. i'll 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 just join from the app okay sorry okay. about it okay just okay. give me a minute thanks raja because uh i uh, have no this worries. uh downloaded and kept it so i am not able to help him out in that okay uh ullas kumar you have joined for the first time yes sir okay can you introduce yourself please yeah i am presently working with kba wow wow So, were you earlier working uh, in some universities in Bangalore earlier? No, no, I was in Chennai. Uh, Chennai, Mike Millen. I was working. I was in publishing field. Okay, okay, okay. Fine. Okay, let him. Um, before that, let me take the attendance also. So today there are new joiners. Anju, do you have uh, LFID? Yeah. Uh, do, should I put it in the chat? No, no. Which one? Are you able to see the... An Anju B. Nair. Anju B. Nair. Okay. Couldn't get it. Uh, feel free to go and update it. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, Ullas Kumar, you you may not be having, isn't it? Or you already have LFID? Okay. I think these are the new joinees. There was a person called Vishal. Our attendance, I am here. Adarsh, yes, right, yes. Adarsh is here. Raja, have you got your uh, LFID? Uh, I don't have it handy right now. Uh, okay. I can update it later. Uh, if that is fine. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can update it and go to that uh, link and feel free to change. Sure. So in the agenda, like at the starting, I have given this uh, membership directory, right? Inside that, 
how to create the LFID will be there. Once you have created the LFID, feel free to add your name in the uh, membership directory also. And there will be like, uh, uh, let me show. Okay, now I can add. I will save it and then show. I will add Elizabeth's name. Elizabeth, you have LFID, right? Affirmative. Affirmative. Okay, but uh, I'm I'm not able to get it automatically done over here. And the YouTube channel link is also here. I can see all the previous meetings recordings over there. And uh, inside here, the SIG email list will be there. Please uh, get inside and subscribe the e for the email list. So once you do that, like uh, you will be getting the automated mails, everything. Um, Events calendar is here. So if you want to check for any other uh, events you want to uh, involved in also, you are most welcome. Okay. That's from my side. Okay. So we are still waiting for others. Like, uh, I think he is... He has got some difficulty. He will be joining back uh, within a few seconds. And may I know who is that administrator in that name? If you give your name, I can uh, add, add you to the attendance list. Can you share the slides? Yeah, 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 yeah. You, I suppose you would have shared it in my mail, right? Yes, yes, I've shared in a mail. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what's happening to the Zoom. I okay, no issues, no flash. issues. Give me a sec, give me yeah. a sec. Let me sure, sure. download it and uh, share it. And okay. Actually, you have to tell me how to show it like a PPT. Something will be there, right? It's it's a, it's a normal PDF. Uh, PDF. Yeah, so I yeah. Can, uh, I, I'll just um, so skip the slide so I can I can. Um... Now it, it shows like this so i suppose how to remove this yeah you can you can, you can um put it in a full screen and uh, no that is what i am uh, uh, yeah. okay yeah i think it should be pdf so okay yes no 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 i think I will stop share and uh, open the, go to the downloads and open it instead of opening from here. Yes, I got it. Okay. Sorry for the delay. So, no, no issues. It's actually from my part. No issues. Now, is it visible? Uh, yes, yes, you can see. Yeah. Okay, so uh, once again, sorry all for the delay. Um, 
24 year patients so uh, moving on to the topic immunosain immunosain was actually a, a project primarily designed for the vaccine traceability or, or uh, it's designed as a, a traceability solution for the vaccine program across india hope you all know like india is having the world's largest vaccination program which is called uh, mission indradhanush uh, with a population of over 140 crore and uh, every year they have to reach almost every uh, child which is getting uh, born and india have one of the very extensive vaccination programs across the world they are providing free vaccination to children right from the birth till the age of uh, 18 that's what the india's vaccination program and please note that this project was in the pre covid scenario it's not in the after the covid vaccination or we started this uh, back in 2018 so this was uh, primarily targeted towards the Uh, uh the child health vaccine that is uh, in india it's called as a reproductive child health vaccination register where uh, every expectant mother is actually given a book the book will actually contain the details uh, of the mother right from the pregnancy till the birth of child and after the birth of child the child data is also included and it keeps on adding till the age of 18 so that was a common process and the important um, challenge over here uh, uh, can you just move to next slide uh, i have to see the challenge so <clears throat> the main challenge over uh, here is like uh, when, when comparing the dif different studies across the world uh, you, you can see like uh, even though the government of india is actually providing almost 11 different vaccinations completely free of cost uh, almost 57% of the young children uh, that is who are less than 3 uh, are fully vaccinated so there is a huge gap between uh, uh, children who are getting vaccinated and not and this also led to spread of uh, many epidemics in uh, india and uh, the donor from the donor side also say like the bill and melinda gates foundations and many other uh, donors who are uh, into providing such um, vaccines for the children they are also much worried about this uh, coverage analysis and that is when uh, they try to figure out okay how we can uh, address this uh, data gaps uh, in this context and also uh, is there any technological solution being possible to complete it trace and uh, and figure out these things so till 2018 there were no complete traceability solution for vaccinations in india they were having around uh, 18 to 20 different physical ledgers primarily right from the primary health centers to a district level to state level to national level and all uh, it was all kept in multiple levels some of these ledgers were digitized but some of them were still in the physical formats but even though with the digital ledgers the traceability was not properly address so if there are some kind of um, traceability challenges say like whether this vaccine have to be recalled or whether this vaccine have to be given or not there was no proper uh, data available and there was no proper uh, solution available so that was a challenge actually listed and that is where uh, kba figured out like okay it was uh, mentioned as a grand challenges uh, india program which is uh, for the immunization data you know we innovating for action and uh, it was jointly connected by the bill and melinda gates foundation with along with the department of biotechnology for birac uh, and we we found out like because hyperledger was in a um, emerging stage at that time and we were uh, primarily focusing on hyperledger sawtooth as well as hyperledger fabric at that time and we had strong uh, connections with intel on hyperledger sawtooth because sawtooth was mostly focusing on the supply chain dimension at that time so uh, we uh, we presented um, uh, the possibilities of hyperledger on offering a complete permission uh, dlt mechanism which can be used by the go uh, government for the health health department and they were very keen on adopting such uh, innovative solutions and out of the uh, 260 plus applicants only nine were actually being selected and we were actually one among that and we were only the only one who were focusing on the uh, blockchain based solution that is on on the uh, hyperledger Uh, so um, we were uh, also covering um, the same uh, along with icmr that is the uh, uh, indian council of medical research for a pan india rollout of 15 locations so the uh, initial uh, piloting was done in the state of kerala and we were awaiting uh, the final confirmations uh, for 2020 21 but uh, by that time the covid wave hit and icmr was mostly uh, busy with the covid vaccines and controlling the things and Uh, we were also not uh, given uh, access to the health centers because of the lockdown and covid scenario so this started in 2018 and our pilot was happening from 2019 20 period uh, so yeah this is what uh, immunization is all about it's a big data and blockchain powered uh, a mobile and web app enabled for uh, the complete solution analysis or the, or the complete coverage analysis for the uh, immunization program 
so whatever be the vaccines which are given to uh, children uh, it's like uh, you you don't need to uh, completely um, trust the the manufacturer you, you don't need to completely trust who is going to give the vaccine because there is always an element of trust whether you can uh, trust this particular vaccines whether you can uh, trust a particular health center or uh, trust, uh, trust a particular um, hospital so what we um, propose is like okay uh, if if it is valid in india or if it is valid to be um, administered across india uh, we we have the this certified solution of immunization which is actually being uh, there from the health department and anyone can actually come and verify whether the vaccine which is being listed on on this immunization is genuine or not because they have the uh, entire credentials they don't have to trust that particular person so you can if you face some issues you can definitely uh, figure out and do it it's, it's like a, a, a simple a digital ledger mechanism and we also eliminated the written ledgers and other uh, manual entry uh, by introducing a, a simple qr um, scanning mechanism so in the uh, reproductive child health register which was still in a printed format we actually introduce a qr code on top of it and for the vaccinations uh, based on the batch of vaccine we also put a qr code so uh, what happened was like in the previous scenario it was all uh, like a written uh, thing or a digital uh, thing which was actually entered either in a laptop or a name um, tab so the the challenge was that most of these um, health workers were paid uh, in terms of they were actually in, in in contract roles so they will be paid in terms of the number of vaccines being administered or the number of ch uh, child which they have actually met so there were a lot of malpractice happening when a child is actually moving from one location to another location the data doesn't move with them or the data is not being um, entered properly also the vaccine vials say even suppose say for a single day of uh, administration uh, you have to administer almost 20, 200 vials of vaccine so even if just 30 or 40 children are coming they will actually enter the remaining data and mark like oh, we have administered 200 vaccines and uh, you will get the payment so uh, that bottles will be wasted that vaccines will not be reach reaching the child but they'll be just simply entering some child details and all and they have to do it so india uh, there is a uh, mandate like none of the uh, child should um, should face a situation like there is no vaccine in that center so in order to cope up with that uh, based on the birth rate of india um, the health department will be producing three times that of the uh, vaccine that is uh, if uh, thousand ch children are born per day 3000 vaccines have to be produced for each and every slot so that uh, there is always a proper stock in the cold storage and that again uh, causes a lot of wastage of money because most of these vaccines after the uh, expiry date they, they have to be discarded so that's where we um, we figured out this challenge because uh, we cannot completely change the system it's uh, actually a very legacy system and it follows a lot of principles a lot of um, uh, uh, security criteria from the health department so what we were given the privilege is like okay only you can add a simple qr code no other changes can be made but from that, the data data keeps on moving to the blockchain. So that is where the implementation, we, uh, we developed a mobile application, a web application. So I think um, after the COVID scenario, now the government of India have also launched their own application, which is called the uh, MyDi application, which ICMR plans to integrate immunization also with the uh, MyDi application. Uh, MyDi is uh, mostly for the uh, ASHA workers or Anganwadi workers, which is from the government of India. And for the RCS book also, um, currently there is no mobile application, but we have launched a mobile application back in 2019. Now certain states are also uh, launching the uh, mobile application. Then we have the uh, blockchain system that is primarily we uh, started building it with the Hyperledger software at that time. And we also had a big data uh, platform in the back end uh, to go for the analytics and other, other um, data part which were needed for the vaccine administration. Uh, can you just move to the next slide? Yeah, these were the important challenges because the digital records was not available at that time in most of these health centers and uh, the integration with the RCS uh, register because when the children are migrating from one area to another area or oh, the data uh, will not travel with them and they have to make new registration so there is always some kind of data redundancy and duplication happening with multiple uh, points and also there is complexity in modeling the data because uh, the the, the samples were not uh, properly available for us and also uh, we need to completely define the system because uh, the health centers do not have a proper mechanism they will just store it in cold storage if some child uh, comes for some kind of vaccination they will give assets and record in the register and they just have the monthly targets with them nothing beyond that so we need to 
have a like a uh, system have to be developed uh, to cope up with these uh, challenges and to see uh, which health center uh, which child is coming and how that vaccine have to be um, addressed all those things have to be sorted that is why we uh, designed um, this big data platform for uh, including the analytics part uh, can you move to the next slide yeah this was the uh, basic uh, flow of the immunization uh, i hope uh, the screen is uh, visible to everyone so uh, it have uh, two two chains one is the vaccine side so when the vaccine is produced from that part onwards the vaccine will be traveling right from the cold storage till that particular phc where uh, for every batch of vaccine we have a, a qr code uh, what we initially suggested was like for every vial of vaccine we will if we have a qr code so that we can have uh, the very minute level of traceability but for printing a qr code in the vaccine well it, it needs a lot of uh, other clearances also so we are uh, waiting for that for the time being for the uh, piloting we we printed the qr code in the in the batch so that at least a batch can be uh, traced out and on the uh, child side because uh, we cannot uh, change the current protocol so we just added a simple qr code printed it on top of the book so while uh, entering the data no physical data inputs no digital data inputs only uh, the uh, asha worker or the or the health worker will be actually scanning both the qr codes so it, it, they have to scan the qr code of vaccine and they have, then they have to scan the qr code of uh, child if that child is not uh, vaccinated with this corresponding vaccine they can administer the vaccine and this data will be added to the uh, blockchain or to the to the hyperledger system so this is how the uh, the data was actually being collected and within the mobile application we have also included some alerting mechanism based on the time and date okay if if you are pending if you have some pending vaccines you will get some alert and also the uh, uh, health center workers they will also get some alerts regarding okay this child is not getting vaccinated you have to reach those, that particular child or mother and make sure that uh, that child is getting vaccinated and um, this alerting mechanism was also uh, uh, useful for the district level and state level administrators where they can also focus on the coverage and also for the vaccine manufacturers they can also figure out how much vaccine is actually available in the cold storage and how much is needed for the uh, upcoming months based on this system so uh the stock uh, or, or the excess stocks or surplus stock in the core storage can be reduced um, to a greater extent and they can also ensure that um, the fresh vaccines are being uh, received in this core storage and they don't want to recall too much of vaccines after the expiry date is happening because recalling the vaccine is a very a big challenge they have to go through uh, every vaccine's expiry date and they have to recall it which was quite difficult so uh, in most of the health centers uh, once the vaccine is getting expired uh, they are not using copper mechanism they are just uh, throwing it uh, to trash or something of that can happen uh, proper recycling was not happening in many health centers that was one important challenge which was also uh, getting uh, address with immunoshin uh, can you just move to the next slide so this was the final architecture which was actually approved by the government of india for uh, implementing the immunoshin uh, you can see from the uh, district and um, state centers the vaccine moves uh, to the corresponding uh, primary health centers with a proper QR code, and at the session again, this is properly being administered. Okay? So uh, no kind of physical uh, entry happens, uh, right? If the QR codes are which are being validated by the government of India is being printed on these uh, vaccine vials, they can scan the QR code once and they can administer the vaccine. If they are going to scan it multiple times, or if they are uh, going to take it for uh, multiple times. Uh, you can you can always have an alerting mechanism telling like okay this is a, a duplicate entry or this is a uh, redundant entry and same is the case with the beneficiary side that is the child side uh, they can uh, verify uh, this corresponding vaccine so like uh, they go with a mobile application or a, a book with a QR code uh, by simply scanning the uh, digital version of the book they can actually uh, make sure that okay this uh, corresponding child needs a vaccine and they have to uh, get the vaccine at this corresponding uh, instant. So both these matching happens. We we maintain two separate um, ledgers for it because uh, the vaccination ch uh, chain it have to be monitored by the Bayrag, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, donors and many other uh, people. But the beneficiary chain, which is uh, mostly a, a very uh, secure uh, record, which have to be only with the Directorate of Health Services and the concerned uh, central government and state government departments only. It will not go outside to other. Uh, but this is what we um, uh, uh, tried out with the immunosheet and can you just uh, go down the next slide 
uh, obviously as uh, we have uh, leveraged almost every features of the hyperledger which was uh, provided uh, it, it gives a complete transparency and traceability to all the vaccines which were there and we can also have a very good uh, data monitoring and decision making effort because we have a credible data being stored in the in the hyperledger socket at that time and it also reduce the time and effort uh, drastically uh, because it was uh, completely automated uh, I, have, uh, I have the metrics of the um, time consumed in the, in the coming slides you can you can see that also the mobile application uh, at that time since it was uh, completely on the physical ledgers we introduced a mobile application but i think right now uh, many states have introduced their own e health application which also integrates this um, uh, mobile mobile health records and also the government of india have given the uh, anmol app as well as mydi app for the uh, uh, primary health workers after the COVID vaccine scenario. So they are also uh, trying to use it. Uh, can you move to the next slide? Yeah, uh, so this was the uh, thing. Uh, typically, it took around five to six minutes for a, a vaccine to be administered. And you can see long queues of uh, mothers taking their child to, to vaccination. And it was uh, reduced to almost just 45 seconds. That is, there's a time for getting the vaccine and uh, making it recording. So we have uh, tested it in almost 26 plus uh, primary health centers in, in the district of Trivandrum. And I think around 600 to 700 uh, children were also getting vaccinated. So uh, typically the vaccine drive uh, runs for an entire day. But after implementing this immunization, they can uh, wind it up in, in just one hour or two hours based on the crowd. And the waiting time was almost zero. You don't have to carry your child and wait in long queues or wait in um, uh, sunlight outside you can simply come get the vaccine and uh, move, move forward that was a system which we uh, developed and uh, the uh, we have also interacted with the uh, parents that is basically mothers and uh, the caretakers they were also uh, willing to use the data is uh, rcs book so that their data is also securely being um, stored in this uh, records and they also get a proper alert mechanism when they have to get the next vaccine all those things were uh, properly alerted and um, that that was a important highlight of this solution so you don't have to worry about uh, keeping um, track of that physical book because many parents uh, lose their physical book many times and they won't be uh, remembering when to take the next vaccine because in the very early day what we have seen is like in the very early days of a child say right from the birth till the age of three or four parents will be rem remembering the vaccine schedules but once the uh, uh, children are growing up um, uh, the the vaccine intervals are getting longer and parents may somehow lose their books or they may they may um, forget to take these vaccines uh, say for example some uh, additional vaccines were also being included like the pneumococcal vaccine the vitamin a um, uh, supplement for every six months like is there, there are man, many uh, additional vaccines which were introduced by state based on uh, certain geographic conditions so all those things were um, uh, missed by some parents because they were busy with their own uh, their own daily course and they were uh, missing that so uh, this kind of alert mechanism also helped to improve the coverage uh, uh, for the primary health centers and they can also achieve their target uh, in a in a genuine fashion can you can you move to the uh, next slide yeah this is uh, this is about the piloting we we piloted uh, in 2019 20 time there was the the pre covid scenario in around uh, 26 uh, primary health centers and almost uh, i would say 600 plus Children were vaccinated uh, during the pilot with the permission of the uh, government of Kerala through the uh, KDISC as well as the Health and Family Welfare Department. Uh, they, were, they were given permission for the uh, QR, uh, QR printing as well as on administrating the vaccines. And these were some of the uh, prominent centers which we, uh, uh, which we selected for piloting this phase along with the junior health inspectors of uh, the government. So all this process was completely under the control of uh, the Department of Health and the Director of Health Services because uh, as uh, technical people, we are not uh, directly mandated to handle a vaccine. The vaccine has to be definitely handled by a proper uh, doctor or a, or a medical medical professional only. We cannot directly go and handle a vaccine. So uh, we, we just keep track of uh, what is happening in the back end with the technology part and whether it's providing the correct results. But the real, real administration is, uh, still happens with the uh, doctors only. Yeah, uh, can you go to the next slide? So as I mentioned, uh, we are in discussion with ICMR for integration with the uh, Mighty application. So uh, the plans have to be changed after the COVID scenario because uh, in the pre-COVID scenario, the idea was that after the uh, 
rollout in Kerala. We were given almost 15 locations across uh, India. But due to the COVID lockdown and uh, other related things, the ICMR was uh, completely stopping all those operations. Uh, and ICMR, uh, because of the COVID vaccination, they were also looking forward for uh, similar solutions. But we also presented the immunization for COVID vaccine too. Uh, but then some some central regulations came like okay they will be having their own mobile applications on uh, not uh, moving to any any other external applications so they actually created this uh, mighty mighty application and uh, we are also selected for the phase two of implementation as a, as a pan India rollout but we are yet to uh, receive the the complete uh, regulations and guidelines regarding the rollout we have submitted this entire code to uh, uh, government of India as well as to uh, ICMR. So that will be a, a fully integrated mobile application for health healthcare officials as well as uh, all the beneficiaries, and they want it to be in a multilingual format. So currently, uh, this supports uh, Hindi, English, and Malayalam languages. We want it to happen in all the 28 languages uh, which are alive in uh, India. And to generate the um, blockchain-based uh, thing, we we have to complete a QR code enabled vaccine certificate, which we are currently uh, issuing. Uh, for the uh, for for the government uh, government uh, trained professionals as well as uh, for those who are actually getting uh, vaccines, so that that part is also being suggested by ICMR to to be included uh, in, in in the future version of uh, immunochain. Uh, can I can I go to the next slide? Yeah, this was a, a publication which we uh, uh, made made on, on this dimension, and we also. Have a completely open source code uh, in, in the GitHub repo. Can you go to the next slide? Uh, yeah, this was some screenshots of our uh, professionals also uh, uh, talking with the uh, healthcare professionals while administering uh, in, in the pilot phase. It was mostly in Trivandrum. So you can see the physical ledgers as well as the mobile application. We, we did it both parallel and we uh, trained them to. Uh, use use those um, solutions and they were uh, even even after the trials they were actually using this solution for their own uh, purpose until covid scenario because after covid they were uh, having a complete shift in this uh, scenario so all these 26 health centers were uh, utilizing this immunization solution in a full fledged uh, manner uh, till till the covid time uh, can can you move to the next slide yeah, this is a demo. Uh, I think this is actually available in the uh, uh, YouTube YouTube channel of uh, Kerala Blockchain Academy. It's the working of the entire uh, um, solution that is the entire mobile application. Once you're free, you can just uh, search it. So that is all about the uh, immunochain application. And currently, as as I mentioned, it was uh, initially in the Hyperledger Soto. So currently, we are actually uh, having a team which is migrating the entire uh, thing into Hyperledger Fabric because you know like Soto is currently not... Uh, um, uh, completely available. It's it's archived. So we we have uh, teams who are working with Hyperledger Fabric on it, and we also have a couple of uh, queries from the private sector also. Private sector uh, primarily for the electronic health records because we we were working with some electronic health record management systems using uh, Hyperledger Fabric. So uh, in the, in that dimension also the work is progressing. But our primary target, as I already mentioned, our primary target was uh, this uh, have to be uh, used by the government of India mostly for the vaccine administration, vaccine traceability, along with the uh, Department of Biotechnology. So we are still uh, in discussion with those uh, teams so that uh, we can uh, integrate it full flesh uh, to the entire government. And we can also scale it up to other uh, geographies. So like, uh, there, there were some interesting things as um, um, Dr. Anasui was mentioning, we have students from across the world. We have students from almost uh, 65 plus countries. And with this open uh, source code, uh, we have some students who are from some um, African countries, from the East African area, who were uh, trying to do the same uh, approach or who were trying to uh, utilize the same approach for their own geographic uh, areas. With, they have made some pilots, they have made some uh, small POCs and showcase to their government, but I'm, I'm yet to uh, get any resp further response from them. So it's a fully open source code. We are also looking for collaborators who can actually uh, take it further because uh, we, we want this to be adapted uh, to all levels and benefit uh, every every human being who are who are into this uh, vaccine field yeah i think uh, that's all uh, from from my side if, if you have any queries uh, feel free to ask and we will be happy to collaborate with uh, more on the healthcare side in, in hyperledger once again thank you thank you so much uh, ansui and the hyperledger team for giving me an opportunity to interact uh, with uh, you guys thank you so much thank you atish uh, that was actually a wonderful uh, demonstration like uh, so if 
uh, you people have any questions, please feel free to ask him. Yeah, no, I think, uh, yeah, most of, most of the participants are from uh, our, our own alumni and KBS. So they actually know the solution wherever they are. Yeah, no, uh, not just the solution. Yeah, yeah. Anything related to that also, you are free to ask. And Raja, like uh, you were uh, planning to work on something uh, on the health records, right? So if you have any queries, please feel free to ask him. Yeah, sure. Uh, Dr. Adarsh, um, it is a great um, initiative and I can see uh, all the good work that um, has been put up by Kerala Blockchain Academy. So congratulations um, for, for coming up with a great solution. A couple of queries on that um, uh, architecture. Okay, so you mentioned uh, there are uh, two QR codes, one QR code which comes from the vaccine maker and then uh, there's another QR code that is generated by your system, right? Um, yeah, so the, the vaccine maker does not put the QR code. The QR code on vaccines was actually uh, issued by the director of health services. Say uh, the vaccines will be procured by the uh, respective uh, health service uh, department, which is from the from the government itself. Uh, so they okay. will be uh, they will be uh, putting putting the um, uh, QR code on vaccines. So in, in our initial proposal, it was like as you rightly rightly pointed out, every vaccine well should have the QR code. Like uh, if the manufacturer is manufacturing that particular vaccine. Each vial should have the QR code, but for that they need to have a lot of regulatory changes because the vaccine vials are very minute uh, uh, bottles which which have a very small area for printing. So adding a QR code in that needs a lot of um, reconfigurations and all. So for the for the piloting, what ICMR uh, suggested us was like per batch the uh, the government will be issuing the QR code. So uh, that that was how that uh, that batch number QR code was issued and it was actually printed uh, per batch. So again, um, there is always a, uh, a, a minute chance of malpractice. Say like uh, batch means it, it may have around 10, 10 vials or five vials or uh, 20 vials. So if uh, for the for the entire 10 vials, there'll be only, only a single QR code, which means like if someone uh, may be able to swap between that uh, that two vaccine vials, that is also possible unless you have individual uh, QR codes. So the uh, the other one that is on the, on the beneficiary side, uh, we were actually issuing, we are issuing in the sense like, uh, we went to the uh, primary health centers and the each and every health center they have a unique id for each and every uh, rch book that is a reproductive child health book and that that id we were actually printing it uh, with the uh, book so that in in the mobile app also it was integrated so even if you are losing your book and many many parents will not be remembering or recollecting the complete rch id but they will they will remember their own mobile number so with that mobile number you can generate an otp and you can get the uh, rch id as well as the uh, QR code. So um, from the from the administration side, they will be just scanning only the QR QR code of both the sites. They will not be doing any manual entry uh, at the uh, administration side. Okay. So so in the physical uh, RCH, uh, the QR code uh, uh, you're going to paste the QR code that is being generated by the system. Uh, is that yeah, right? for the uh, for the pilot. Yeah, for the for the piloting, uh, we did uh, did in that fashion, and we are also. Uh, given the uh, the QR integrated design for the RCS book printing, because RCS book was is always printed uh, state wise. Say every state have their own uh, printing facility for RCS book with some unique code and all. So we we suggested with the um, DHS like whenever they are going to print the RCS book, uh, you, can, you can integrate it in a QR based fashion, uh, provided uh, they have the uh, mother's digital. Because if if a mother if an expectant mother is registering with the nearest um, uh, Anganwadi with the Asha worker, then only they will be issuing the book. So once once a mother is registering with the uh, details like uh, the mother's name, address, and other other details, they will be giving some bank account details and all. So you can you can print out the book with, uh, with those details with the uh, QR code. That's what we suggested. But for the pilot, we just uh, um, printed the QR separately and pasted it on on the uh, uh, existing uh, books. Okay, thanks. Thanks for the clarification, uh, Dr. Adesh. Uh, one last question. Uh, after yeah, you sure. move to uh, Hyperledger Fabric, um, uh, who all will be the participants of the network uh, uh, along with ICMR? Uh, uh, 
uh, yeah so for the for the initial um, uh, pilot with the um, hapless sort of the the participants were the the directorate of health services because uh, first year there is a uh, director of health services and with the uh, district level notes so we were, we were uh, having notes within the trivandrum i think for the 26 uh, primary health centers we have set up around four or five notes based on the uh, localities of taluk or village we, we have uh, set up that and for the national level implementation obviously we will we will have the state level um, um, directorates as well as the the, the national directorates plus uh, uh, we also suggested the the vaccine um, donors who are, who are a part of this uh, but that that needs more more clearances from the icmr side so obviously icmr will be will be a part of it. so ideally uh, around around 6 to 7 uh, parties will be uh, running running the notes at least 6 to 7 will be there thanks dr adarsh okay uh, yeah thank Did you all i think if there questions are questions no... from the participants So Atash, you were uh, telling about that uh, electronic health records project, right? Is it yeah. uh, running, yes. or you are planning to start it? No, it's it's still in the uh, in the piloting phase. Yeah, like we we have some uh, queries. Mm -hmm. It's not from the government side because uh, mm -hmm. the government uh, is having their own e-health uh, records. But uh, there are some other healthcare providers and the medical insurance providers who yeah. who are interested to uh, to create uh, health records as. Once they were they were seeing the immuno chain, uh, the the healthcare and the insurance providers they are very keen on having such systems where if uh, if you have uh, received all the proper vaccinations, maybe you can uh, get some incentives or, or, or rewards while taking your uh, healthcare premium or the uh, insurance premium. So similarly, uh, they they want to have such electronic health record systems which can be uh, used uh, along along with the partner uh, hospitals and all. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, still in the very very early stages. We are we are still working out on on such things because we we got uh, queries from multiple sites where, where they are, they are having multiple um, uh, opportunities. So uh, we we need to have a a common um, what you call a common consensus should be there between yeah, these yeah. parties because uh, okay. most of them have their own individual systems and integrating that will be quite challenging. Uh, um, so our primary focus was something from the government side. If that happens, because say for example in vaccination also. In India, 95 to 96 percentage of entire vaccination happens on the government side. Hmm. Only uh, less than four percent it happens in the private sector. So uh, that record is very, very crucial. And if we have uh, a proper identity management solution like Hyperledger India or something on on top of it, uh, so that the uh, the data sharing becomes more uh, what you call. Uh, you, you can have a credible data sharing so that the data is not uh, misused by other parties. And also, mm -hmm. we are also looking for the government channel. Primarily, we are we are. Even though it is more time-consuming, uh, I completely understand that uh, we need to get all the sanctions and regulations. But still, we are we are looking forward for more uh, government-related uh, um, strategy because healthcare is a very um, crucial uh, mm. part. So that's correct. If you are uh, if you are yeah if you are working with the with private partners, also we are also a fully government-owned institute, so we have mm -hmm. our own limitations and regulatory challenges when working with the private players and also. Okay. Uh, that things we are, we are still in the very early stages. We are we have not yet launched anything on top of that, but we are we are very keen on working on that. Okay. So like, um, uh, will you be doing that also in uh, hyperledger only, or like you are uh, planning for some other? Yes. Uh, we are we are no we are we are completely planning it on hyperledger fabric. That's yeah. what. Uh, Because actually, Indian government is uh, like if it is blockchain applications, it wants only the hyperledger fabric, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yes. So we we are we are completely planning on Hyperledger fabric. So this solution, uh, why we start with Hyperledger Sawtooth is like we had support from Intel at that time. Uh huh. Because Intel was also very keen on supporting it, and uh, we built a couple of solutions along with Intel on Hyperledger Sawtooth on supply chain and other things for the corporate. And once this came, uh, okay, Intel Intel team was also uh, supporting uh, KB, and that's why we were actually into Sawtooth. But later on, Intel completely more Intel bank group team was there. Mm -hmm. So the Intel Bangalore team they completely moved on to um, fabric or and other other um, hyperledger techniques. 
and i think yeah the hyperledger fabric uh, sorority is now archived so we are also mainly focusing on hyperledger fabric now fabric only right okay that's that's good because even i am getting some inputs from the people who are involved in government like fabric yeah. will be the like uh, in next four five years for most of the applications they are going yes. to use uh, fabric because we are working on consensus even in binival like uh, we started working on Bini BFT and it's now uh, posted as an open source project. So like uh, yeah. it's a consensus yeah, definitely, for definitely. fabric. Because fabric, fabric will be having. Yeah. The, so like we, uh, we we are an official uh, training partner to uh, NPCA, the National mm -hmm, Training Corporation mm -hmm. of India. We are offering training to DRDO. So all all these government agencies they are looking into blockchain primarily as a permission ledger or a permission yeah, DRDO yeah, yeah. side. And they, they all are very very keen on uh, hyperledger fabric or similar flavors. Like so like how hyperledger is working. If they can mm -hmm. have their own uh, internal networks similar to that of hyperledger fabric or something is what they are also looking so uh all these all these government agencies are very very keen on understanding that's why they are actually connecting tv to learn more on hyperledger fabric how things are working with hyperledger fabric yes how they can set up their own uh their own hyperledger nodes within their institution they, their own private networks uh and also collaborate with multi multi parties ecosystems mm -hmm. on hyperledger fabric so everyone is actually behind behind hyperledger fabric uh in the indian, indian context and no one is no one is moving uh, towards the token systems or anything. So uh, we, we will we'll be definitely seeing adoptions because uh, we we know NPCA, DRD, everyone is actually behind. Yeah, that. yeah. So the be, complete they, banking they, sector, definitely, everything yeah. that comes into yeah, yeah, they, they will be definitely. Yeah. yeah. So that's great. That's great talking with you. And like, uh, I hope like you are open for collaborations also. Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. We are open for collaborations too. We okay, can, okay, uh, that's great. We like, can be a, can be a part of any, any projects yeah. that's uh, always open. We are open for that. Yeah, thank you, thank you, everyone. Like, and uh, thank you, Dr. Adesh and the KBA team. Like, uh, so please join for the next meeting also. It is on September 18th. <laughs> so, like, uh, sure, sure. we will, I will post uh, about the agenda in between i will send a mail because like i have to finalize the presenter so we will come up with a different uh, person or like those who have already presented itself i have to pull them in so see you all have a good night yes, thank you so much and elizabeth so much. have thank a great day much. thank you thank you thank you you too yeah bye, -bye.